you might laugh at the messenger. You might be able even to kill him. But you cannot kill the message. Go on just the same. God's message is eternal. His words will never fail. Now, the little tabernacle has no membership, but we have fellowship. We have no creed but Christ, no law but love, no book but the Bible. That's the only book that we know of, and the only thing that we know is we have, as the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins, we have fellowship one with the other. Everybody... lived in a very peculiar time in the past few years. The Gentile church has had one of the greatest revivals that it's ever had since, there, since the days of the apostles. Or the Gentile church didn't have the revival then. It was the Jewish church that had the revival. But the Gentile church in the past 10 or 12 years has had the greatest revival of the history. In my own little fragile ministry that the Lord has given me, I've seen well over a million souls come to the kingdom of God. Don't, don't miss it, friend. Remember, listen to my voice. It'll haunt you all your life if you haven't got it. Out yonder when you're suffering for your punishment and we're weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, that voice will scream back and forth. You hear it all the time in that weary, spooky place of hell. Don't fail. Now's your opportunity. People say today, there's no such a thing as hell. But I'm telling you that. See, oh, surely God wouldn't burn his children. Certainly he doesn't burn his children, but the devil will his. Whose child are you? with a message of life and with the evidence of the resurrection. Dear God, we are only going to be mortal once. And what will it be if we let this opportunity pass us?
God's chief sign is a prophet. Now, I'm going to speak a few minutes about that. They are his word made manifest for that age, and that's the reason a prophet is always God's chief sign. He has never sent a judgment upon the earth without first sending a prophet. Just see if such the scriptures. Then consider, now I ask you this hour, you people here of Jeffersonville in 1933, the supernatural light that fell down here on the river that day when I was baptized in 500 in the name of Jesus Christ, as about a 20-year-old boy, what did it say, Jeffersonville? What was it at the foot of Spring Street there? When the Courier Journal, I believe it was the Louisville Journal, packed the article of it, went from across the Associated Press, come into Canada. Dr. Lee Bale cut it out of the paper way up in Canada. In 1933, when I was baptizing my 17th person under this witness, and you know the rest of the story. And we're standing there baptizing this 17th person, a light come down from heaven, shining down above there like a star falling from the heaven, a voice that, as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, your message shall forerun it. This day, this scripture. This day, it's one around the world. Elijah, they're one of the greatest prophets of the age. Only done four things supernaturally in all of his life of 80-something years. And Elisha, the double potion, done eight. And we see thousands times thousands. With our own eyes, look at the angel of the Lord in a pillar of fire. Scientific search taking it to the world, knowing that they're going to be judged by it. Before God sends deliverance to his people, he always sends a prophet to notify them. Always sends his prophet. Because most of the time, people won't read and study his word. They just simply go join church and let it go at that. They don't sit down and read. Have I ever told you anything in the name of the Lord but what come to pass? Is that right? Everything has always been right. I've never asked you for one penny of money in my life, have I? Not one time, never took an offering in my life. I'm not here for money. I'm not here to deceive you. I'm here to manifest God's word of the hour. I've told you the truth, and God has testified that it is the truth.
honestly, I know I'm called everything from an archangel to a devil. I'm your brother. I'm your brother. And those things may be said about me. I can't help what's said. I must be honest. I want to say as Paul, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision that came to me as a boy. And since then, the Lord has worked having confidence in God, faith in Christ. I'm not a preacher, as a preacher would be, an educated man. But I do know what I'm talking about. I only got a seventh grade education, but I read all the seventh grade books. I might not know his book too well, but I know the author real well. That's the main thing. If I know the author, he'll reveal his book. We send our children away to Bible school and colleges, and we learn them the Bible. What good does it do to know the Bible if you don't know the author? The Bible doesn't say to know the Word. Satan knows the Word better than any student in the world. That don't make him save. It's not by knowing the Word, it's knowing him is life. To know him. That's true, he does nothing outside of what he does for man. We realize that. That's his, that's his agent. That's what he chose. Why? I don't know. He can make the sun to preach the gospel. He can make the wind to preach the gospel. He can make the wind to do things. But he chose man. That was his idea. A human would speak back to a human, not himself. But the word of the Lord came to the prophets, the prophesiers, the preachers. So what do you think about him now? I said, I love him. I said, I couldn't do nothing else but love him. My whole makeup has become part of him. See? And I said, I couldn't do... I said, actually, took your wife and baby? I said, no matter what he would do, if he'd turn me down as a judgment and say I wasn't worthy to enter in, he's right. And if there is such a thing as in hell having love, I'd still love him there for what he's been for me. Antichrist can do everything but heal. He can't heal. Did you notice Jambis and Jambis, when they stood against Moses, they could do everything but heal. They could bring curses, but they couldn't take it away. See? God's the only healer there is. He's the only one can heal. And today we have the finest hospitals we've ever had, finest doctors we've ever had, smartest doctors, the best doctors, the best drugs we ever practice with. Don't you believe that? And we got more sickness than we ever had. Why? We got more sin and unbelief than we ever had. Unbelief is sin. 
What is sin? Unbelief. Smoking, drinking, committing adultery, lying, stealing, that's not sin. That's the attributes of sin. You do that because you're an unbeliever. If you was a believer, you wouldn't do that. Just because you quit drinking and quit smoking and quit drinking and committing adultery, that doesn't make you a Christian. You're a Christian because you are a believer. If you're not ready to come in a prayer line, don't come. Because you must remember that this is the time when God is going to take you at your word. And you've got to take him at his word. And it doesn't matter what anyone else says or how you feel. Your feeling has nothing to do with it. Jesus never did say, did you feel it? He said, did you believe it? And you must believe it. And your healing is already secured. Jesus Christ healed you at Calvary. And no matter what your trouble is, you must accept it. And before you can accept it, you've got to believe it because faith is based, uh, healing is based on faith. And faith is based on the Word. Tell me what your trouble was. Sure, you got heart trouble. You're ready for the hospital to have an operation. Yes, that is true. You believe it now? Yes, mm -hmm. I do. You're not from this town either. No, not. not even from this state. You're no. from Missouri. That's right. Waynesville. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your name's Elsie. That's right. Your last name's Martin. That's right. I go home and be well. well Lord Jesus remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he stood here with this suit on and he'd give me down in Africa, and if he was standing here with this suit on and the woman said, I'm sick, will you heal me, Lord? I want to ask you now, be careful. Could he heal her? No, sir. He can't do what he's already done. See? He's already did it. She'd say, I'm a sinner, save me. He said, I've already did it. Do you want to accept it? Is that right? When you accept him as your personal Savior, as the emancipator. Jambus and Jambus and two astrologers stood there and performed the same kind of miracles that Moses and Aaron did. Went right along with them. Impersonation. Brother, we got the world full of it today. The church is full of it today. Carl Comparison. As a great Bible teacher that they already said that divine healing was of the devil. That the devil did divine healing. I want you to find me the scripture where the devil ever done divine healing, where it's ever promised by him. God said, I'm the Lord. Psalms 103, 3, I'm the Lord who healeth all of thy diseases. And Jesus said, if Satan cast out Satan, then his kingdom's divided. Again, he can't do it. He can't cast himself out. So all healing, no matter where it comes from, comes by God alone. And watch these magicians. 
They could bring the life, but they couldn't take them away. They couldn't heal. They could perform the miracle, but they couldn't perform healing. Healing lays in God alone. That she went to, down below pardon to a woman that wasn't nothing but a shadow of a woman with cancer. And played the tape to her on one of the meetings and the woman is totally delivered. Uh, Out in the yard raking leaves, the doctors can find nothing of her cancer. Amen. I don't understand how any person could preach the gospel without including divine healing because sickness is an attribute of sin. Before we had any sickness, we had no sin. When sin came, then sickness followed with it. Might not be your, your sin. You inherit these things down as God promised the three and four generations. But yet the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. your medical sign, the staff, you got a serpent wrapped around a pole. What does that stand for? He said, I don't know. I said, it stands for this. It was a symbol of divine healing where Moses lifted up the brass serpent in the wilderness. Amen. See, which was only a symbol, only a symbol of the true Christ. Now, today, medicine is a symbol of divine healing. And though many of them don't believe it, real good doctors do believe it. But some of them don't believe it, but the very emblem that they hold up testifies to the power of Almighty God whether they want to believe it or not. I said, well, if I was in your place, if you was called for the ministry, you was called to pray for the sick. Don't forget about the gift of divine healing and then just pray for the sick. Never said the gift. And uh, every 
Every one in the Bible, every gift is the gift, but divine healing, and it's a gift. It's gifts of healing. You can have all kinds of gifts of healing different ways. But every other is the gift. The gift of prophecy. The gift of this. But divine healing is in the poor gifts. Now, you don't have to be a Christian to be healed, but you have to be a Christian to stay healed. For the Bible said, go and sin no more, or a worse thing than this will come upon you. Is that right? We go to church and we find the people going in and having some great drive on. Uh, we want to make our denomination this year so many more. Bring your letter from your other church and unite with us. And slogans like a million more and 44 and all such as that cry, trying to outgrow the next denomination. And in doing so, we've let the bars down of the Bible. We've got away and begin to teach different things. you rather have Jesus and His Word than to have any denomination's idea about it? How many would rather have Jesus and His Word? Now find one place in here where God ever ordained a denomination. Find one place He ever put a woman preacher or ordained one in the Scriptures. Find one place that any person was ever sprinkled or poured. Find one place that anybody was ever baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Any words, anything but the name of Jesus Christ. Not Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Find where one person is ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Come show me. Where every person was baptized in the name of Jesus. Been baptized in water by immersion, 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just only the title, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There was never a person in all the Bible, not one person was ever baptized in the Bible in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in that title. No person was ever baptized in the church in history for the first 300 years this side. Everyone was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ until the Nicaea Council at Nicaea Rome, where the Roman Catholic Church was organized. Then they substituted the title of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. that whoever sins you remit to them they're remitted whosoever sins you retain to them they're retained but how did he do it Peter said the one that had the key stood on the day of Pentecost said repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost is that right life before you, just like Adam and Eve, every man's a free moral agent. And their tree of life and tree of death is before us all. You can take either one you wish to. It depends on what tree you eat off of, it's what you are. If you'll notice in the Bible, the man that God used was the man was trying to get away from all of it. That's the one that God used. Take, for instance, Paul, Moses, and so forth, trying to run from the very call. But man that usually wants to go and blast over the world and tear it down, usually God can't trust him because he can't. He wants to do it himself. He gets into his own way with it. If a man don't want to go, then God almost has to drive him into it. That's the type of man that God usually uses in the Scripture. They couldn't even find their name. That's why he took, that's God. He takes something that's nothing and makes something out of it to his own honor. He took a chaos and made it easy. God. He went out in the wilderness and waited. His job was too great for education. His job was too get great for theology. He had to announce the Messiah. Now, Moses was very persistent, first a running coward. 
He had been educated. No, he could even teach the Egyptians wisdom. He was so smart. And yet he failed on the job. It took 40 years to put the education in that Pharaoh gave him. It took God 40 years to take it out of him before he could use him. Out in the wilderness. And sometimes we have to get emptied up before he can be filled up. Man don't seek God. God seeks man. The very beginning of, at the Garden of Eden proved it. Adam also been running through the garden, hollering, Father, Father, where are you? But it was God going through the Garden of Eden saying, Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam, hiding. That's the nature of man. And Jesus said, uh, no man uh, can come to me except the Father draws him first. I said, in the Garden of Eden, God and the devil chose their part of the man. The devil took his head, God took his heart. The devil tries to show him with his mental powers some great something he can do. And he only wants to see it with his eyes, what he can see. God comes in his heart and makes him believe for things that he cannot see. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Jesus one time, coming from another country, came into his own, and they said, We heard you did so and so at such place. But then he could not do many mighty works. Now, we don't like to say it that way, but that's the way the Scripture says it, that he could, do, he could not do many mighty works because of their unbelief. And God's power is limited to your faith in it. That's the only limit it has is your faith. If all things are possible to them that will believe it. And now, in the last church age, we find here that they're naked again and don't know it, but it's not the Holy Spirit veil. It's the veil that Satan slipped over Eve back there, a veil of lust. The lust veil. I've often said if eating apples caused women to realize they were naked, they had better pass the apples again. Because it's, it's time. I don't say that to be rude, but I'm saying to, to make a point that it's the truth. It wasn't apples.
But her first son was not the son of Adam. If it was, he had the birthright. The Bible in Jude said that Adam, at the, Enoch, was the seventh from Adam. Is that right? And he starts out, Adam begot his son, Seth. What about Cain, which had the birthright? Wasn't Adam's son. And the seed of the serpent, that's the killer. Many people don't believe that. But if you'll just read in Genesis, the Bible said that the serpent had a seed. And I'll put enmity between the serpent's seed and the woman's seed. So the serpent had a seed. And if the serpent's seed was spiritual, then Jesus was not a man. So the woman's seed was spiritual. They both had seeds, and the enmity is still there. A serpent had a seed. And if you just take your Bible and get out and be real reverent before God, I believe God will reveal it to you. And if you do not understand it, I'm, I'm available anytime to do my very best to help you by letter or by, or by personal interview or anything that I could do to help you. All these women with short hair and these men wearing their, like they got hair like their wives. I see them absolutely have these roller curlers in their hair, curl it up here in front. What a perversion. That's the result of Satan's eating. And like her, she's trying to cut her hair like her husband. Her husband's letting his hair grow like his wife. And she is wearing his clothes, and he's wearing her underneath clothes. There you are. She's getting masculine and he's getting feminine, see? It's Satan's eating, contrary to what God made it at the beginning. That's the truth. If you do have these, how can you win with Bob hair tell me that you're filled with the Holy Ghost? One word! Oh, I spoke in tongues. I don't make any difference. I've seen witch doctors speak in tongues. Interpret. Shock the spirit, dance in the spirit. How can you win? Call yourself the head of the house and let your wife wear shorts and carry on the waist. Call yourself Christian. How can you pastors ever face God with a thing like that without standing up and protesting? You can't make them do it. But if you get preaching like that, you won't belong in the seminary very long. You ought to be teaching those people how to receive great spiritual gifts and be lifted up and have heavenly things like that and great manifestations of the Spirit. You ought to be teaching that instead of their bobbed hair and wearing clothes away. you. I said, sir, if they can't understand their ABCs, how am I going to teach them algebra? Yeah. Right.
God's no respect of person. If God would let this world get by, this New York, this America, this world, get by with what is done now without bringing judgment up on it, he'd be duty-bound as a just God to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize for burning them up. For he burnt them up for the very same things that we're doing right now. Let me tell you something, old proverb, that the devil counts his crowd, but God weighs his. That's true to yesterday. God weighs you by his word. See if you're found morning or not. I don't care about crowds, how many, how improper it is. It's God's word being made manifest for this hour. That's right. I don't care about crowds and who comes and who doesn't. It's God's words at stake like it was there in Pilate's judgment hall. Wait and see what we've found. Where we found one. Sometimes we hear great preachers who can preach mighty, but we'd rather see a sermon live than we would hear one preach. Help us. That's the evidence that God is on the inside. too much, or you might uh, preach too much sometimes, but there's one thing you will never be able to overdo, that's pray. The Bible said, I would that man pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands. You'll never be able to have too much fellowship with God, and God longs for his creature who he created in his image to fellowship with him. got near the bush, he heard a voice. God had to quieten him for 40 years before he could ever speak to him. And we won't stay quite 10 minutes so God can speak to us with all the rumble and bumble we have of this day. And yet, Moses, after 40 years, stood there and in the presence of that bush, and that 
one voice that called him. He knew more about God in five minutes after that than all the 80 years of training had taught him. It made a different man out of him. It'll make a different man and woman out of you if you'll just stand still long enough to hear his voice. Today, when we hear the message of God come forth, we think it's some crook crank or something. And there, there's plenty of it in the world. Schemes, money making, unconcerned, people under impressions and, and speaking as if it was the Lord. The Lord always truly identifies himself. And notice, but in that, did you know all those things have to come? Certainly. The... Uh, the rose must have its thorns. The kernel in a, in a nut should be covered over with a burr. You have to dig out the burr to get down to the kernel. We just fail to see those things. The jewels, the, the, the metals and jewels and money silver and gold in these mountains are covered with dirt filled with pyrite and other minerals that runs together with it. We expect that. you got to dig it out. I asked someone the other night, I said, are you a Christian? But they said, I'm a pretty good Christian. I said, no, you're not. <laughs> there is no pretty good Christian. How many have ever seen a drunk sober man? Nobody. How many have ever seen a black white bird? Nobody. It's either you've never seen a sinner saint. You're either born again or you're not born again. so many members this year. What difference does that make? How many members you have? We're not looking for members of a church. We're looking for members of Christ's body. Yeah. Born into the kingdom of God. Not by the will of man, but by the will of God. He wants to be king. He wants to rule us. He wants to be Lord. People let him in and say, I'll let him be Savior, but they won't let him be Lord. Lord means ownership, rulership. Come into my heart, Lord. Save me from hell, but don't tell me what to do. That's the attitude of the people. Mechanics ain't what runs the automobile. It's the dynamics that runs it. The mechanics don't run the church. It's the dynamics, the Holy Ghost that gets into this Word. It's not a seminary that teaches you all the theology and the Greek interpretations, but it's the dynamics of the Holy Ghost in there to set that afire and to bring it to pass and to make it live just exactly what the promised Word is for this hour. Not the mechanics, the dynamics. It takes mechanics and dynamics. The Word and the Spirit. 
They are the one that gives life. Somebody told me he uh, had one one time was converted, received the Holy Ghost, and he said to him, how you get along? He said, pretty good and pretty bad. He said, well, how do you mean pretty bad and pretty good? He said, well, since me received the Holy Ghost, he said, there's been two dogs in me. <laughs> and one of them a black dog, one of them a white dog. He said, they argue all the time. <laughs> he said, they growl and fight at one another. He said, the white dog wants me to do good, the black dog wants me to do bad. He said, well, chief, which one of them wins the fight? He said, that depends on which one chief feeds the most. <laughs> so, I think that's a good answer here. See, there it just depends on the warring of the body that's in you. It depends on which one you cater to, which nature you cater to. The carnal nature as the things of the world or the spiritual nature as the things of God. woman sister uh, sat down in the state she said uh, Dr. Branham said I, I want to give a testimony go ahead sister testify she said I want to say this people I hate that the word we use in the South said I hate what I ought to be and I hate what I want to be but then another thing I know I hate what I used to be <laughs> that's good she knows something that happened amen so I born to the Spirit of God. No, you're not what you used to be. Amen. a football stadium one time and was going to preach I stopped at the door looked up up there and he said it's not the size of the dog in the fight it's the size of the fight in the dog <laughs> so that's what wins the battle see he say, well look, look at all the great churches are against this I don't care what size they are it's the fight that's in the dog that's what counts it's the faith that's in the individual you're a coward get back to your cuddle hole a brother of your sword or stout there is a battle on right and wrong to engage Let's fight. A righteous man is not a sinless man but a man that depends on his righteousness by confessing his wrongs to God. your arms is made to hang down. And when you raise your hands, you defy the very laws of gravitation. It has to be supernatural. It's, a, it's against sign, scientific. Against all scientific things for you to break the laws of gravitation. It cannot be done unless there is something supernatural.
any Christian will think of others before himself. Every Christian thinks, but God first, his family second, he's number three. I try to make that a practice in my own house. sat down to me and he said, Shall I regard you as father, or as reverend, or as elder, or what would you want me to regard you as? I said, If you love me, call me brother. Prophesy now of good things to this modern world. The only thing that we can prophesy to the Spirit is disaster, troubles, earthquakes, great tidal waves, sun and moon failing, the church in the Lady of Sin Age. Christ outside the door knocking to get in. Notice. His plans to build a super-denominational church. The World Council of Churches. A super-denominational So that all the world will worship Him, the beast, under the name of United Christianity. Would you like to read that in the Bible? Revelation 13, 6 and 8. It's a modern Tower of Babel. with that. And every church will be called into that federation. Get out of that thing as quick as you can. You'll take the mark of the beast not knowing what you're doing. Get out of it. receiving his life, Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life. The Greek word there is zoe, means God's own life. And the only way that you can ever live again is to have eternal life, which is God's life, because your life will perish. But his life will be raised up again because God is eternal. And you've got eternal life and can more die than God can die. Uh, he that believeth on me has eternal life and I'll raise him up at the last day. Amen. Raise him up again. The eternal life that's in him will raise him up.
The church has waited for this time for 2,000 years. And we are seeing the unfolding of the Scriptures. Jesus in the light of Calvary, just a few hours before he was crucified, spoke more of his second coming than he did of his crucifixion. So it must be a great thing that lies just ahead. There's nothing so important as the coming of the Lord Jesus. For if he does not come, we have been found false witnesses, are dead in the grave, or perish, and there is no hope left for us if Jesus doesn't come visibly the second time. And in the very this light, in the very light of the second coming was so important that this holy week that we are now approaching, that Jesus, when he was approaching it at the first time in the very shadows of the cross, he spoke very little of his death, burial, and resurrection. He spoke more on his second coming than he did on his death, burial, and resurrection. So in the light of this, it must be a very important subject. In the Old Testament, there is many times more scriptures in the Old Testament pertaining to the second coming of Christ than there was to the first coming of Christ. Everything to the human race now after the atonement has been made rests solemnly upon the second coming of the law. expecting him to leave glory someday to return to the earth, to resurrect the dead, and to translate those that are living into a glorified body, to be raptured in the sky, to live with him for the space of three and a half years during the time of the tribulation period, and to return back to a purified earth to live a thousand years here on earth with his church and forever be with him when he sets on the throne of David. Now, we're look, looking for that great time. The battles are all done, the smoke's dried up, gone away, the arms are stacked, the Bible's closed, and we come up to your house. The great morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky as the fourth set. Lord, as we see that great table stretched out there for that supper, thousands of miles long, Looking across the table to each other, battle-scarred veterans, tears of joy running down our cheeks, the king come out in his beauty, holiness, walk down along the table and take his own hands and wipe the tears from their eyes, saying, don't cry no more, it's all over, enter into the joys of the Lord. When this revival is over, he'll come from glory, spread forth his great wings of power, and the little eagles will hook their bills into there and fly away. 
into glory with him.